Hi and hello guys. So today in this video, I will show you as to how you can get started with a Raspberry Pi without plugging in any uh, keyboard or mouse or monitor that is getting started with Raspberry Pi as a headless unit. So a lot of you would be already knowing these steps and the procedure. So this is just for the other set of bunch of people who are new to the Raspberry Pi environment or the Pi ecosystem. So to get started with, you need a bunch of softwares. I will take you through each one of them as we go through this uh, video and I will leave the download links for them in the description of this video as well. So first up, uh, plug in an SD card into your computer or PC or Mac, whatever. So if the SD card already has contents, just pack it up and you need to erase it as a first step. So to erase the SD card, I'll be using a software called SD Formatter. So I will leave the links again in the description of this video. So select your SD card and choose format. So once that is done, um, then uh, proceeding on further, you need a uh, software for writing the Raspbian image onto your SD card. So there are uh, two softwares for this. So one is called the Win32 Disk Imager and another one is called Etcher. So Etcher is also available for uh, Mac operating system. So I would recommend you to use that over Win32 Disk Imager. So once you open uh, the Etcher, you get an option to select your image. Scroll down, move over to the move over to the Raspbian image that you have downloaded and unzipped select that and then choose flash make sure to select uh, the appropriate SD card over here so once the flashing process is done you should have the uh, SD cards boot directory open over here so within the boot directory uh, right click and choose new and then choose text document and name this text document as WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF. Just make a note of the spelling properly. Choose yes and double click this to open it and paste the command that I have given in the description onto this page. Change this part over here to your uh, Wi Fi name and the part below should be your Wi-Fi password. Once you are done changing, uh, close and then choose save. After this again, we need to access the SSH. So right click and choose new and again a text document. Remove the pre-existing name and just label this as SSH and then press enter. Choose yes again. So you need not open this and uh, change anything. Just leave uh, it as a blank file called uh, SSH. So if you are using any uh, Raspberry Pi board prior to the uh, Pi 3, that is Pi 2 or the ones which doesn't have the Wi-Fi on board, you might have to first uh, hook up an Ethernet cable onto your Pi. So that is pretty much it uh, on regards to this initial steps or process. So eject the SD card plug it onto your Pi and power up your Pi. So while the Pi is booting, open up uh, your router interface and get to the list of the devices that are connected uh, to your router. So as soon as the Pi boots and the file systems are expanded, you should have your Pi appearing up within the list of devices connected. Okay, so my Pi is up and running. I have got two Raspberry Pis. One is the Pi 3 and other one that I am currently setting up is Pi 0. So I have got the second Raspberry Pi up here. Copy the IP address from your router and uh, at this point you require an another software called PuTTY to SSH onto your Raspberry Pi. As mentioned before, I will again leave the links in the description of this video. So under the host name or IP address, paste the IP address that you just copied from your router. Make sure to 
have the connection type selected as SSH and port as uh, 22 and then choose open choose yes and now by default uh, the login for any pi is pi and the password will be raspberry so now if you want a desktop interface for VNC type sudo raspberry config go into interfacing options number 5 choose VNC and choose yes would you like the VNC server to be enabled choose yes choose ok and then go into advanced options go into resolution and make sure to select a resolution matching the display if you don't select this by default it will switch over to 480p and that will look pretty awful on a 1080p monitor so match the screen resolution to the resolution of your VNC monitor that is host monitor that you have on your windows since we are not connecting any display or keyboard or mouse this display resolution should match the resolution of the, your uh, windows or the system through which you are accessing your Pi choose ok and then choose finish would you like to reboot choose yes close the party and now uh, we need another software for accessing the desktop the raspberry pi desktop that will be the uh, vnc and again i will leave the links for this in the description of this video so if you are using the latest raspberry and stretch uh, things have changed a bit so now if you boot your pi uh, you will get a startup prompt or a dialog box which was not there before so paste your IP address in the address bar over here and choose connect to address or host choose continue the username will be pi and the password will be raspberry again choose to remember the password if you don't want to enter it each and every time and then choose ok choose ok so this was what that I was talking about previously so with the latest uh, raspbian release now you have an uh, welcome dialog box or a startup dialog box which was not there before so choose next choose your uh, country and language and time zone choose next if you want you can change your uh, password otherwise just give next so we have already added our uh, Wi-Fi credentials before starting up so just skip this step and if you want you can run an update check or else we can do that a bit later again choose skip and then done so that is pretty much it now you have access to the raspbian desktop without even connecting any keyboard or a mouse or a display onto your pi so that is pretty much it so that is how you get started with the raspberry pi board as a headless unit without connecting any monitor keyboard or mouse so i really hope that you find this video useful and informative and until the next video, see you guys, take care and bye bye.